I'm Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with another Sunday night live stream show. That's right, it's Sunday night, y'all, and it's time for that live stream show. Thanks for tuning in. I hope everybody's ready for a great show tonight. Got lots of cool stuff lined up for you. It is Sunday night, March 24th at 8.29 p.m., and we are getting ready for that live stream show about to start here very shortly if you were if you're watching Sunday night March 24th at 8 30 p.m. you're watching live if you're not watching Sunday night March 24th keep in mind you are not watching live in order to win those free trips guys you do have to be watching live so Make sure you stay tuned in with us, guys, and make sure that you are paying attention. Uh, and don't forget to send any f uh, questions into that uh, text line in the upper right-hand corner. You can text us at that number, 727-393-1947, and that's how you get entered to win those free fishing trips, y'all. So, again... You got to comment where you're watching from. Make sure to share this video with your friends. If you're watching on YouTube, give the video a thumbs up for us. Subscribe to our channel. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure you share this video on your timeline. Make sure you tell your friends to tune in, like our page, and all that good stuff. In order to win the free fishing trips that we're going to give away later in the show, you do have to comment at least one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream. So you got to be on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page, and you got to comment at least one time. So... Hopefully everybody's ready for a great show tonight. We got some cool photos to show you. We got some good stuff to talk about. And I've got the Jameson all ready to rock and roll. <laughs> no guests on the show tonight. You guys are stuck with me, unfortunately. Uh, we are back in operation. And that means our captains and crew are busy. And uh, we are blessed to be rocking and rolling with trips once again. And uh, that means it's a little more difficult to get the guests on the show, but hopefully you guys still enjoy it. Um, tonight we're going to be talking all about near shore and offshore fishing, talking a little bit of inshore fishing at the beginning of the show. And uh, we got some cool announcements to go over as well. But I think we're ready to get this thing rolling. Hey guys, happy Sunday night. Again, it's Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina. So our Sunday night live stream show is every Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. Thanks for tuning in and joining us tonight for that live stream show. Uh, we always start off the show by showing you some photos of what's been going on. Uh, we show you inshore, near shore, and offshore, what's been biting, what we're catching, talk a little bit about what we're looking forward to. Then we might go into some weather, and then we get into your questions. If you have a question, you can text that question to us right in that upper right-hand corner, guys. That 727-393-1947 number. That's where you send your questions, and that's how they get answered. If you drop a question into the comments, I appreciate it, but... They don't get answered live during the show. After the show, I try to go back through the comments as best I can. But if you text us at that number in the upper right-hand corner, that's how you're going to get your question answered possibly live during the show. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get rolling and show you guys some of these photos of what's been going on in shore. So we'll start in shore. The mangrove snapper have started to roll in into the area. As that water warms up, those mangrove snapper become more and more common uh, in the inshore waters. We're also seeing some of these redfish throughout the area. The redfish bites actually going pretty good uh, inshore around those oyster bars, especially at higher tides. Oyster bars, grass flats, mangrove shorelines, lots of schooling redfish around the Tampa Bay area. Some really nice fish. 
uh, around and being caught. We're also seeing a lot of snook action. The snook are very active right now. I think the snook is probably biting best uh, out of any inshore fish on the flats, uh, in the passes, on the beaches. At night and early morning hours, the pass is a great time to uh, great place to find the uh, snook biting well. During the day, we're seeing some snook in the pass and a lot of them on the beaches. Great areas to find those uh, snook feeding heavily. We're also seeing a good mix of trout. The trout bite has been going well in those deeper holes adjacent to the flats and uh, around the edges of the grass flats. Also, we're seeing a few trout in the passes at night around the docks and bridge lights too. So overall, some really good inshore fishing as of late. Uh, that fishing has been a lot like catching when you catch that tide right. Uh, so important to make sure you're fishing at that optimal time. And oh, uh, my light is flashing. <laughs> One of my lights went out, so this side of my face is a little darker, and it just flashed me for some reason. Hopefully it doesn't do anything crazier during the show. <laughs> Might have a <laughs> flashing light issue, but uh, let's get into nearshore, show you what we've been catching nearshore. So we haven't had a lot of nearshore photos as of late because we were closed for so long. Um, but luckily we're back open now and we're back fishing nearshore and we've been catching some really, really nice fish. So excited to show you these near shore catches. Uh, this one from the hub, uh, the hub's been doing well out there, private charter fishing. Uh, I've been catching some nice red grouper. The red grouper bites actually have been pretty darn good around 70 to about 100 foot of water and the hub on a five hour half day is able to go out there and uh, target these red grouper on the half day so we've been having a lot of happy five hour private charter guests on the hub lately we're also seeing some nice hogfish occasionally on our five and ten hour trips hogfish bites going pretty good and a nice big old smoker kingfish from the hub the other day uh, great bite of kingfish lately we're still seeing a few kingfish still seeing a few hogfish hogfish bites definitely slowed down a bit uh we're not catching quite as many hogfish as we once were uh but there's still a few good hogfish around if you get lucky uh the kingfish are still pretty plentiful right now uh not again not quite as what they normally are in the peak of their run but there's still some kingfish around we're seeing the occasional sailfish. This one was caught by Ron Beaton and his friends. Uh, and then a nice big kingfish from the hub again. Uh, really, really great time out there near shore lately. Uh, with the hogfish biting pretty good, there's a lot of kingfish around. Uh, still catching a few of them here and there. A lot of mackerel. There's a few cobia near shore. There's a few sailfish even. The red grouper bites really good, about 70 to 100 foot of water. Really good comparative to how it was the last few years, I should say. Uh, not historically uh, amazing, but definitely catching some red grouper we're seeing a good mangrove snapper bite uh, throughout the near shore waters we're picking at those mangrove snapper pretty good even in that shallower near shore area lane snapper pretty active uh, overall it's a real good time to get out there as long as the weather's cooperating and that's been the trick lately is that weather right now i'll show you before we get into the offshore we'll get into the weather here real quick we're going to go to our website, hubbardsmarina.com, go to fishing trips. We're going to scroll down to the weather links page. This is where all our weather is located in weather links. You can see here on our weather links page, uh, the I'm going to look at the Egmont Channel entrance. So this is the inshore report. Uh, you can see tomorrow is going to be rainy and nasty, almost a oh, little over five foot tomorrow. Uh, so tomorrow's not such a good day. But luckily it calms down a little bit Tuesday and looks really nice Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and even into the weekend. Really nice weather. So looking forward to some great weather there uh, starting Wednesday all the way through uh, till Monday. It looks like we have a nice little stretch of beautiful weather. Um, 
but that bad weather that we're seeing today rolled through today and uh, is going to be around tomorrow look what that weather is from if you scroll down to the bottom you can see uh, the Mike's weather page or spaghettimodels.com this is my favorite weather site that I use uh, to look at big huge weather weather patterns <laughs> and uh, I love these prog charts this really lets you know what's going on so right now down off the very southwest corner of Cuba we have an actual low pressure tropical wave system spinning storms up our way and you can see here tomorrow that low pressure system is actually going to make it into the Gulf and sit off our coast and that's why we're going to get a lot of bad weather tomorrow and then by Tuesday it's going to start making its way up into the northern Gulf and kind of getting out of the way mostly just causing wind uh, on Tuesday because it's going to be hopefully rained out by then so definitely uh, some interesting weather patterns long story short right now we see some pretty bad weather uh, starting tonight and all the way through tomorrow uh, and then it calms down Tuesday and like I said Wednesday through around Monday as far as the eye can see weather looks really good at this time hopefully it stays like that and a great way to monitor that is again through our website hubbardsmarina.com click weather links that's going to keep you in tune with what the weather's doing um, but let's see here what are we catching offshore you guys want to see some photos from that 39 hour fishing trip that came in this morning I know I want to look through them again they did pretty well out there on that 39 hour it was a little slower than we would have liked on that trip uh, definitely didn't get as many mangroves as we would have liked but they did get some nice mangroves they had a nice pile of fish uh, they got a lot of these yummy pink porgies as we call them uh, some nice yellowtail not as many yellowtail and mangroves as we were hoping for, uh, but some nice fish. They got some keeper red grouper, got a couple throwback gag grouper, got some nice scamp grouper, some pretty good size scamp grouper. And uh, look at this, Estelle caught the porgy two at a time on that drop. Look at the size of that toro, that is a huge toro. Got an, a lot of jacks, a lot of jacks. Unfortunately, a lot of those jacks were a little too short to keep. Uh, we did get some keeper jacks, but not as many as we would have liked. We had to really sort through those shorties uh, to get a few keepers. Nice big old scamp. Ray is the gentleman. This is Ray Summerhour. This was the guy who caught that big Kubera a couple trips ago. This trip, he caught the biggest scamp grouper, the biggest red grouper, and the biggest African pompano of the trip. He's got the hot hand for sure right now. Also got into some Mahi Mahi this trip. That was pretty cool. Uh, some nice amberjack. There's that pompano that Ray caught. Beautiful fish. Uh, definitely a nice big old pompano. Some more amberjack. Estelle with one of my favorite eating fish. One of those strawberry grouper. They don't get very big, but they're incredibly good eating. And uh, there's the light. Just randomly turned on. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know what's going on with that thing. <laughs> uh, there's a nice big porgy. That's a monster. And here's Ray's monster red grouper. This is the red grouper. To see a red grouper that's 20 plus pounds, 20, 21, 22, 23 pounds, that is a monster red grouper. And this one was just shy of 21 pounds. It was a huge red grouper. Uh, so good job, Ray. Another beautiful fish. And he actually told me this morning that that red grouper fought much harder than that Kubera that he caught on that previous trip. So pretty cool to see such a healthy red grouper. Nice big old mangrove from uh, Joe May from Orlando. Some more mangrove snapper action. Overall, it was a pretty good trip. They put together a nice catch. Captain Brian, Jason, and Will, and uh, Tammy in the galley. It was a good time. Some nice fish caught by everybody. A lot of different species caught for sure. And uh, they put together a nice catch. They had to kind of grind it out though. Bite was a little picky. Uh, didn't get quite the pile that we were hoping for. But hey, it was a good time.
some nice fish. So that was a quick report from the 39 hour. You guys saw what we're catching inshore. You saw what we're catching near shore. And uh, you saw a little bit of that offshore as well. Uh, right now we are sitting at 483 live, or no, 403 live viewers. I apologize. So we already have enough uh, live viewers to give away one of those free 39 hour trips tonight we're going to give away a five hour half day for two guests we're going to give away a 10 hour all day for two guests and we're going to give away a 39 hour trip for one guest so lots of good stuff going on tonight uh, we are going to get into your questions here very shortly but first i think it's time to give away one of those free trips so we're going to start off with our five hour half day for two guests and uh, let's see who that lucky winner of the five hour half day for two guests is ah. bob cole from leesburg you are the lucky winner of that five hour half day trip for two guests uh, so again, how you claim your trip, uh, Mr. Bob Cole, is you text that number in that upper right-hand corner. Text that number, your home address, uh, if you're picked as that lucky winner. And uh, that's how you claim your free trip. Light went off again. <laughs> this is freaky. Uh, time for a new light, I guess. All right, let's get into these questions and uh, see what's going on over here. Do you allow jig fishing on the five and 10 hour trip? And if so, is it worth spending time and do you sell jigs in the store? Yes, we have a ton of vertical jigs in our shop. We have the diamond jigs, we have the slow pitch jigs, we have a variety of knife jigs, flutter jigs, tons of jigs in the shop. Uh, a lot of people jig fish more on our long range trips like the 12 hour trips, the 39 hour trips, the 44 hour trips, that's where more jig fishing is done. And I would say the best trip coming up with an opportunity for lots of jig fishing would be this Friday's 39 hour trip. We already looked at the weather. The weather is spectacular this Friday. Uh, that's May 29th. That's this coming Friday. Uh, May 29th, we added a new 39 hour trip in. It's only got 17 people on it. There's only 17 people going on this 39 hour trip. So if you want to try some deep water vertical jig, slow pitch jigging, this is the trip to do it with only 17 people going out. That's again this Friday, May 29th. If you want to join us for that trip, I'd highly recommend it. And uh, yes, we do sell jigs in the shop. On a five and 10 hour trip, I probably wouldn't jig fish too much just because it's shallower water most of the time vertical jigging you're kind of working that water column and on a five or ten hour trip we're just not that deep of water so i would probably hold that more for the longer range trips but it's up to you uh you can jig fish on our trips as long as it's not causing an issue uh who is the captain and crew of the 12 hour night snapper and how has that trip been doing the 12 hour night hasn't gone out in a while. We had to cancel the most recent one due to weather. The one week before that, we didn't have one because of the moon phase. Or wait, this past week, we didn't have one for the moon phase. The one before that uh, was canceled due to weather. But long story short, we haven't had one in about three weeks. The, uh, the one previous three weeks ago struggled a little bit. Current was really tough. Wind was a little tough. Um, but Primarily, they do pretty well on those 12 hour night snapper trips on uh, vermilion snapper, porgies, mangrove snappers, the main target. We catch quite a few of those. Uh, Almaco jacks, a lot of heads and tails, maybe a red grouper or two. Uh, the 12 hour night is a lot of fun for sure. It gives you a great opportunity for mangrove snapper fishing if you don't have time for a 39 hour. Typically, Captain Bobby runs that trip. <laughs> typically Captain Bobby runs that trip and then we kind of sub in different crew members uh, based on the schedule that week we don't necessarily have set crew for any one trip we have some crew members that typically work specific trips like Will typically does the 39 hour trips Smokey typically does the 10 hour trips on Tuesday and Thursday um, but it kind of switches back and forth between there so you never really know who the crew is going to be but you can always check before your trip and find out who the crew is going to be 
Uh, how often do I need to trim my braid fishing line after a trip? That's a good question. Uh, we kind of talked about this a few shows ago. I mean, typically braided line, if you're fishing a lot, you want to kind of switch it out once a year, maybe every other year, depending on how often you're using it. Um, typically I will, uh, after a fishing trip, I'll cut my rigs off. I'll clean my, uh, reel out i'll spray it down basically we'll go over reel maintenance real quick so after a fishing trip i always like to take my tackle off my rod i don't like storing my rod with my weights on the rod because it'll beat up the rod uh if if i do i'll make sure my weights down there by the foam of the rod and reel so that way if the if i'm driving in my truck or if it's sitting in a rod holder on the boat that weight's not bouncing against the gel coat of my rod and breaking apart that rod right uh, so I always make sure I store my lead on the foam of the rod or just simply cut the lead and the hooks off. Uh, then once I get that prepared, then I'll take a hose and do a really, really hard soak of the rod, the reel, and especially the fishing line. Uh, soak it, not a direct spray, just a misting spray. Get that thing really, really wet and get all that salt water off of it. Then I'll let it dry. And a lot of times, especially on those two speed reels with those little holes in the back of them, I'll make sure to oil or grease and protect the reel and typically cleanse oil is my favorite it's a cleaner it's a lubricant and it protects it's an all-in-one makes it real easy squirt some cleanse oil into that reel let it sit a little while and then let the product drain out because it actually goes up in the reel collects up all that salt and grime and then once you let it uh, leak out of the reel and drain it actually brings all that nastiness out with it so cleanse oil is a great product to use uh, and it works well and then Typically on the next fishing trip before I tie another top shot and a lead on I'll typically pull out maybe 10 15 20 yards of braid Because a lot of times especially when you put a line to line knot on your braid and put that top shot on top of that braid It'll twist up the braided line and you can actually feel the imperfection in the line so uh, typically every trip I'll pull 20, uh, 20, 25, 30 yards off, depending on how much that braid is twisted up. Um, and you can just simply go by touch or feel and look at that line. Uh, for monofilament, not, you don't have to pull as much off because you're not doing the top shot and that line's not twisting. Braid is flat, so it tends to twist. Uh, so monofilament, you don't have to pull as much off. I typically just run my fingers up and down the line, make sure I don't have any spurs or nicks in the line before adding new lead swivel leader for my next fishing trip. But it's always a good idea before you start rigging a rod for your next trip to make sure that you pull a little bit of line out of that reel to make sure you're starting with fresh line. That's always a smart idea. But you don't need to pull too much out, just enough to make sure it's fresh and doesn't have any imperfections from your last fishing trip. Uh, looking at a 10 hour trip, what creature comforts uh, do you offer for a senior citizen? So normally on a 10 hour trip, we have the enclosed air conditioned cabin open and available. We have the full galley. The entire boat has a roof around it to keep you shaded for a majority of the trip. Uh, also, we have uh, benches that wrap around the vessel. There's a men and women's head on board. Uh, there's a lot of creature comforts on those party boat fishing trips. However, right now, because of the COVID-19 crisis, we actually have those enclosed air conditioned cabins closed. They are not open to the public because we want the public, we want our fishing guests and crew to be outside in the open air where that air is circulating freely, you're in the sunlight, uh, and that is supposedly the most safest place to be is outside in the open air. So that's why our enclosed air conditioned cabins are not open to the public right now. So right now, not so many creature comforts. And also right now, if you're considered uh a vulnerable group over the age of 65 you're really not supposed to be coming out uh, on the boats according to the CDC not me 
I didn't say that. That's not my rule. But <laughs> if you go to our website, hubbardsmarina.com, you can see right on the top of the uh, website is that green banner. You can click that green banner and it's going to take you to our COVID-19 operating policies and procedures. And you can see more about what we're doing as far as the virus is concerned. So definitely check that out if you're interested in coming out fishing with us uh, and you want to know more about that. The most important thing to keep in mind fishing spots on our 10 hour trips 12 hour trips 39 hour trips 44 hour trips they are not guaranteed we have to move people around to ensure that social distancing so if you have a trip booked and you have a certain spot you're excited to fish in keep in mind you might show up we might have to move you out of that spot the day of the trip right before the trip we print out a manifest and we print out a map of the boat and i personally take every group and make sure each group is separated uh, by at least one fishing spot and uh, if you come with a group of people you can fish together you can stay together but you got to keep distance between your group and the next so definitely a lot of work on our end but that's what we got to do right now with the virus we got to encourage that social distancing and do our best to enforce it uh, let's see here what other questions do we have Whatever happened to the people that broke into the dock area a few months ago? Uh, we have people getting onto our dock a lot more uh, commonly than I would like. Uh, and basically what happens is when we uh, see it on video, when someone calls us, when the sheriff drives by and catches someone, essentially if they're not doing anything nefarious, uh, we just ask them to leave and not come back if they're... This light is killing me. <laughs> If uh, if they're actually doing something nefarious, climbing on the boats, vandalizing, get caught stealing something, uh, we trespass them and don't allow them back. Uh, we don't. I don't make a habit. I really don't like pressing charges against anybody, especially if it's something stupid like uh, trespassing on the boat or stealing a fillet knife. Um, but uh, repeated offenders, we have. Uh, had to take that action when we caught someone stealing multiple times. But as in the case of the most recent one, just some young kids climbing on the boat, and uh, the sheriff went down there and told them not to come back. So it was a simple situation, luckily. Uh, hopefully nothing goes missing. That's the biggest thing is as long as nothing's being vandalized or stolen, we're pretty laid back. Uh, but the dock is no trespassing, just like the signs say, at night for that reason. We've had issues with it in the past and unfortunately a few bad apples ruined it for the whole bunch so when our office is closed our docks are no trespassing and of course the boats are no trespassing uh, but for some reason a lot of people like to sneak onto the dock and then even climb onto the boat which is just beyond me mind-boggling but it happens um, let's see here what other questions do we have uh... You have said that all spots on the boat are good to catch fish from. Uh, for a first-time person, is there a spot that's better so I don't uh, make seasoned anglers mad but still can get help and advice from deckhands? That's an interesting question and viewpoint. I mean, for me, my favorite fishing spots are anywhere along the side of the boat up to the bow. Uh, from the middle of the boat to the bow along the side is my favorite areas to fish. Uh, it's generally more open. There's generally more room uh, right now because of the virus and because we have to spread everybody out. Anywhere on the boat has more room, uh, but it uh, it. I wouldn't say there's one spot better than any other to get advice from the crew because the crew's going to be doing laps around the boat. The crew's supposed to be helping everybody out equally. So there's no one spot better than any other for sure as far as getting advice from the crew and as far as uh, making sure that you're not upsetting anybody else. Uh, again, right now, because we're limiting the number of people on the boat and spreading people out so much, Right now is a great time to go for you guys because we're not taking as many people and we're limiting the amount of people fishing and we're spreading people out. So uh, the, the client, the guest, the fishing friend is definitely uh, coming out ahead during these uh, tough times with the virus um, for that reason because you have more room, more room to fish. Uh, let's see here. 
next question is uh, getting through some comments there we go I've been seeing a lot of video on slow pitch jigging lately is this tactics tactic practiced on your trip uh, yeah there's a lot of people that slow pitch jig on our trips uh, it's becoming more and more popular definitely as time goes on I feel like more and more people are trying this whole slow pitch jigging thing um, it's expensive and uh, it's unique and uh, a little tricky to learn takes a little bit of practice uh, but you can catch a lot of fish slow pitch jigging I like uh, vertical jigging or slow pitch jigging at the very beginning of a spot or very end of a spot uh, to try to get in the very beginning that most aggressive fish to come up off the bottom and hit the bait and then towards the end of the spot kind of send something down that's a little unique different from what the fish have been seeing uh, that's my technique me personally though I like bait fishing a whole lot I like dead bait on the bottom letting that sit still holding that rod perfect so I feel that line and when I feel that bite setting the hook and catching that fish I really enjoy bait fishing for that reason. Jig fishing is a lot of fun because you're working that rod and working that reel, making that jig do the perfect dance, and then all of a sudden you get slammed. It's fun too, but there's something to be said for holding that rod, actively fishing, making sure your line's uh, tight, tight enough to feel the lead, but not tight enough to disturb that lead on the bottom, and actively moving that rod tip with the boat to make sure that I'm constantly feeling that bait. And then when I feel that bite, being able to feel it and set the hook appropriately to catch the fish, I think that's a lot of fun and uh, it's a challenging. So I enjoy bait fishing for that reason. But slow pitch jigging is very addictive. Uh, it's a little tricky to get started because there is some pretty good technique to it. But like you said, there's a lot of videos out there online. Um, Benny Ortiz and the guys from Southeast Florida and Southwest Florida are definitely kind of the pioneers of that slow pitch jigging. So check into that. I know Benny Ortiz does a lot of uh, seminars uh, around the area, around the state, and uh, he's definitely kind of the godfather of slow pitch jigging, if you will. So I'd check him out. And uh, he's got a lot of videos and seminars if you want to learn a lot about slow pitch jigging. I'm not super into slow pitch jigging myself. Like I said, I still enjoy bait fishing a lot. But there's a lot of people that do it for sure. And there's a lot of fun to be had. But uh, it's basically uh, an expensive habit because the jigs are expensive. The chase hooks are expensive. The assist hooks are expensive is what I mean. And they don't... the, the Vertical jigs don't come with hooks half the time, so you got to buy a, a $40, $50 jig that doesn't have hooks on it. Then you got to buy a $15, $20 pair of hooks. Then you got to buy a $20 pair of split ring pliers and a bunch of split rings. Then you got you got to get a $200 rod and a $400, $500 reel. It's it adds up quickly, and then you need the rod to match the jig size. So you need a bunch of jigs and a bunch of rods. Everybody that I know that's gotten into slow pitch jigging has invested a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort, but they catch a lot of fish. So it's a it's a it's a good time, and there's definitely something to be said about how well it works. I've I've seen it many times proven to me. Uh, one of the biggest gag groupers caught this past year was caught on a slow pitch jig. So they definitely work, um, but. Just a word of advice. <laughs> it is expensive and it is addicting. Just look at Rich Golis. Rich Golis started slow pitch jigging all of a sudden one day. And now he's got a bunch of slow pitch rods and reels. A bunch of jigs. He hardly even fishes with bait anymore. And uh, yeah, he's, he's uh, invested. <laughs> but he loves it. He has a lot of fun. Rich Golis is on the 12 hour extreme trip. So if you want to learn more about... Uh, slow pitch jigging on our trips rich Golis is a good, great guy to ask and that's captain rich he's running the flying hub too nowadays let's see here uh what do you think the bite will be like tomorrow 
with that weather coming in around John's Pass and the Skyway. Uh, there is a lot of weather coming in. The bite was pretty good today ahead of the storms. Tomorrow when that storm is actually here, the fish will probably be chewing. The weather won't be so good. Um, but one of the things that I like doing when I'm inshore fishing or when someone asks me about inshore fishing is, again, on our website. You can go to our website, hubbardsmarina.com, click fishing trips, scroll down to that weather links page. On the weather links page, you can get the tide information, the tide and salooner information at smartfishingtides.com. Excuse me, smartfishingtides.com. And um, you can pick where you're going to be fishing. In this case, we're going to pick John's Pass, and it's going to tell us exactly what the bite's going to be like. So tomorrow, bite doesn't look so good tomorrow uh, but you can click on the day and it's going to tell you the tide what the weather is going to be doing basically going to be raining all day it says and then it's going to tell you when the bite is going to be the best so the bite's going to be the best right around 8 a.m and then again right around 8 p.m tomorrow uh, but it's only a 5 out of 10 so not so hot tomorrow um, but right before sunrise uh, and through sunrise and right before sunset looks to be the best to answer your question at least for john's pass um it's going to be a pretty nasty day if it was me i would uh spend tomorrow getting ready to go fishing uh later this week when the weather gets nicer um, but that's me let's see here what is the cost in hours of your fishing trips right back to the website for that question go to fishing trips and then under fishing trips you can click fishing trip information and on the fishing trip information site or under the fishing trip information page you're going to see all our different fishing trips and down towards the bottom will be a list of the trips with the prices uh, so i don't know if you guys can see that uh, right there lists our different trips, our five hour half day for $65, the 10 hour day for 109, 12 hour night snapper for 149. And I clicked on a button, <laughs> but long story short, you get the message. All that information is right there available on our website. If you ever have any questions, you can always reach out to us right through the chat window on our website or text us. Let's see. What's the next question? If you are fishing for grouper and snapper, which Skyway fishing pier would you choose and which side? Uh, is the This is by boat or even on the pier. Uh, so Skyway fishing pier, uh, traditionally the rumor is the south Skyway fishing pier is best. Uh, if it was me, I'd be trying to find those structures like those rock piles, those rubber rubble piles that outgoing tide letting that bait drift out there is a great way to catch some of those gag grouper once they open um, as far as specifically where uh, not going to get into that too much you can uh, get out there and see for yourself where those more experienced anglers fish i don't fish the skyway myself a whole lot i've been down there just a handful of times um blessed to have grown up on the back deck of some fishing boats so i fish mostly offshore but there is some hardcore really good anglers who catch a ton of fish from the skyway and what my grandfather always said is you have two ears and one mouth for a reason just shut up and listen and uh, my grandfather used to preach this to my my father my dad preached it to me growing up and that was one of the coolest parts in my mind of fishing on a party boat because I was able to sit back at a young age on the party boat and watch. And the guy over here in the corner who looks like he's been fishing for a hundred years uh, and is maybe doesn't want to talk to everybody, maybe isn't so friendly, sit back and watch. And you can learn so much from the different techniques he uses, from the different approaches he uses, the different rods, the reels, the tackle. And uh, you can learn a lot from fellow fishermen on the party boat without even asking or without even saying anything, just doing trips, getting out there on the water and looking and watching and see what works and what doesn't work. And uh, that's definitely, in my opinion, one of the biggest benefits of party boat fishing is meeting fellow anglers, meeting other anglers, talking to other anglers, and then just watching and learning from everybody around you. Because you're always picking up new things, even to this day, almost every trip, there's some unique thing that someone's trying that you're like, that 
that doesn't look right, but then all of a sudden it works. So really cool part about pier fishing, party boat fishing, uh, fishing in busy areas, you get to learn from fellow anglers. And that's a great benefit of fishing somewhere like the Skyway Fishing Pier. How's the weather look for Friday morning's trip? Weather looks gorgeous starting Wednesday all the way through Monday, as we showed before. So beautiful this coming Friday, luckily, at least right now. So hopefully it stays that way. Uh, but I think it is time to go ahead and do another free trip giveaway. At this point, we're going to give away that 10-hour all-day for two guests coming at you now. So let's see who won that 10-hour all-day for two guests. And the winner is Richie Roger from Connecticut. Watching. <laughs> Richie Roger, congratulations. Again, if you are picked as one of those lucky winners, you do have to text uh, our page uh, at that phone number in the upper right-hand corner, your home address uh, within a few minutes to prove that you were watching live because you've got to be watching the show live in order to win. All right, so we got some more questions to get through. Once we get through these questions, we'll make some announcements, and we still got another trip to give away. So stay tuned. We still got a little bit of time left here, guys. Let's see here. Is the 39-hour trip on June 12th operating on partial capacity due to the pandemic? Unfortunately, right now, guys, the social distancing is mandatory in Phase 1 and Phase 2. Uh, until we get to phase three opening, social distancing is still required. So until we hit phase three, unfortunately, we have to continue operating under the social distancing guidelines. No matter what you think of the disease, I don't want to start a political argument here or a, the disease is fake argument here. This is purely regulation that we have to abide by that we have no control over that as a business as a family business we have to abide by and adhere to these rules to make sure we don't endanger our ability to operate as a whole so carrying limited capacity is better than carrying no capacity so i'd much rather adhere to these rules and regulations and make sure that we're operating inside that box instead of trying to operate outside the box push the limit and then get totally shut down also uh if you are worried about the virus or if you've got an infant at home like i do you want to try to protect your family and friends and, and uh, do the best we can with that. So we are still operating under those social distancing guidelines since we're only in phase one opening. So because of that, we do have to limit capacities. Now, tomorrow we're going to make a final announcement as far as what our plan is for the first two weeks of June. And uh, then we're going to come into uh, around June 11th where we'll make a final announcement on what we're doing the last two weeks of June. And then towards the end of June, we'll make an announcement of the, about the beginning of July. Around the first week of June or July, we'll make an announcement about the end of July. Basically, uh, what we're going to have to do for now is cut bookings back to our reduced capacity numbers and essentially limit capacity or limit booking uh, to the capacity that uh, that we're using right now. Uh, so if there's a trip that has 25 people on it, that trip will still be open for booking. But if there's a trip that's already sold out uh, at the unreduced capacity, we're going to cut the booking off and make that trip closed until we know, hey, all right, we're going to have to limit capacity. We're going to have to kick some people off or, hey, we don't have to limit capacity. We can take a full boat because we're in phase three. Then everything's fine. We can open up that trip again. So right now, basically, we're cutting down uh, booking ability for any trip that's more full because we want to, again, limit the number of people if we have to limit capacity. We don't want people to continue to book these trips only to get a call a few weeks later to say, hey, you can't come, sorry. That is literally, I have not been sleeping the last few nights because I'm sick to my stomach over the idea of calling a customer that's had a trip book for a few months and to tell them, hey, sorry, you can't come because of social distancing guidelines. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be fun. Uh, I'm at my wit's end with this whole 
issue. Um, but we have to do what we have to do. We have to, again, operate inside that box, as I was saying. Um, but to answer your question, tomorrow you will find out. All right, so next question here. Flatline fishing tips when on a 39-hour trip so you don't tangle lines with other fishermen. Uh, the best uh, tip I can give you is talk to the crew before you set out a flatline. Don't set out a flatline until you talk to the crew. As long as the current and the wind is running right, you shouldn't have any issues. But if the current's running down the side of the boat, you can't put a flat line out on the side of the boat. It's going to rip that right down the side and tangle everybody on the side of the boat. So talk to the crew before you put a flat line out on any trip. It's the biggest tip I can give you. And then once you put it out there, watch it. If it starts drifting one way or the other, looking like it might cause an issue, reel it in and put it away. That's the biggest tip and trick for sure. Be courteous to those around you. Because if it's an issue, you have to put it up because you're only fishing one rod at a time. So if you're fishing on the bottom, holding that bottom rod, that's your fishing rod. If you're flatlining with a rod out, that's your fishing rod. Now, if conditions allow and everything's going right, you can set out a flatline and bottom fish. But that's only in very rare cases and a lot of times it's only for that one person on the side of the boat, on the corner of the boat, in the bow of the boat. Uh, it kind of depends on where the current's going, where the wind's going, how the boat's sitting. Um, but that can all be determined and helped by talking to the crew. And we can help set you up for the best case scenario. All right, let's see here. What is the best recommended fishing trip for me and my nine-year-old son? The best option would be a private charter on the Hub or Flying Hub 2 where we can cater to you and your son. Uh, if a private charter doesn't work, starting out slow with a five-hour half day would be awesome. Great way for any level experienced angler to start getting their feet wet deep sea fishing. Then maybe work their way up to a 10-hour trip. Then maybe after a 10-hour trip or two, try one of those 12-hour nights. Then maybe a 12-hour day. And then you're ready to step it up to this, those 39-hour trips. But definitely first time ever offshore fishing or bottom fishing, I would recommend a five-hour half day. Whether that's on the party boat or a private charter, all a good idea. Are you still going to make a decision about load capacity beginning June 1st? Yes, that is coming. I can't tell you how many times that gets asked every day. And I think that's why I'm not sleeping at what at night because there's just so much anticipation. We work so hard. We work so hard to fill these trips and allow as much ability to get on the water as possible. And now with something like COVID-19 to just come out of nowhere and totally take our knees out from under us, it has been crippling, uh, to be honest with you, and really, really... Uh, overall depressing but luckily we're back open and uh, taking a few people under limited capacity has definitely been a lot better than taking no one and being completely closed so we're going to keep doing what we can to take people out fishing even if it's a few people <laughs> and yes we will make that decision and we will announce it tomorrow Let's see here. I was wondering if you would need to have a flashlight or something like that for the 12-hour night trip. You don't necessarily need a flashlight on our 12-hour night trip or a 39-hour trip because the boat is very well lit, especially the fishing areas. But it does help to have a flashlight or a headlamp, uh, especially if you're fishing up on the bow or something or if you're in a dark area, or in a lot of cases, going in your tackle box. I, know I keep a little flashlight in my tackle box on the 39-hour trips just so I can find that little swivel or that bead or that hook while I'm out there on deck. Or if I need to go in my bag and find my deodorant or toothbrush, uh, always a good idea to have a little flashlight on your bag on a night trip for that reason. Do you need one while fishing? No, not generally. There's plenty of light on deck uh, to help you with that. But it's always a good idea to have one around your bag or tackle box just to help you dig through the box at night. Let's see here. My name. Uh, another question about cutting capacity. <laughs> I get it, guys. We're all excited about red snapper season. I am too. Uh, but uh, I appreciate everybody's patience holding on. Um, 
how do you add the five dollar previous trip discount when booking online any discounted reservations birthday trips uh, return trip discounts all those discounts uh, cannot be applied online online bookings are full price reservations only if you have a discount code or a discount coupon you can give us a call and book over the phone nice question though and we do offer return trip discounts if you bring your ticket back for a five hour trip or a 10 hour trip or a dolphin cruise uh, or a sunset cruise you do get five dollars off per adult per ticket stub on your next visit that discount does not apply to specialty trips like 10 or uh, 12 39 or 44 hour trips Ooh, got the hiccups um What is the best lure or bait for fishing the big three on the flats, snook, redfish, trout? Uh, one of my favorite lures is just soft plastic, uh, an artificial shrimp like a DOA shrimp, uh, a soft plastic paddle tail. It is really hot right now. It works really well. One of those white paddle tails uh, like those uh, slam shady uh uh, Z-Man baits from saltstrong.com. They've been working really well. DOA shrimps, also one of my favorite kind of go-to that catches a little bit of everything. Um, but there's a lot of good, as far as live baits concerned, shrimp is a really good all-around inshore bait. I recommend that a lot to people. If you're going out there inshore fishing, want to catch a little bit of everything, live shrimp's always a good idea on light tackle uh, out on the flats. Let's see here. Uh, my question is because I'm new to saltwater fishing, how do you know your hook size to use depending on where you are fishing? How do you determine the size of the hook? Uh, so you determine the size of the hook depending on what you're fishing for and also where you're fishing. So for example, mangrove snapper, if I'm fishing for mangrove snapper on a dock or a bridge inshore, I might be using a number, uh, or a one-aught hook or a number one hook. If I'm fishing for mangrove snapper and 40 foot of water offshore, or 40 foot of, 40 foot of water near shore, I might be using a three to four-aught hook. If I'm fishing for mangroves on the skyway, maybe two or three-aught hook. If I'm fishing for mangrove snapper in 100 foot of water, maybe five-aught hook. If I'm fishing for mangrove snapper on a 39 hour and 150 foot of water, maybe six-aught hook. So basically, it depends on where you're fishing for that fish. Because if you know that fish is going to be larger, he's got a larger mouth. If you know there's other prey around that could have a larger mouth, a larger hook is necessary. If your prey still has a very small mouth, a smaller hook is probably necessary. For example, a hogfish. A lot of people use these little baby hooks for hogfish. And they got these mouths that open up to swallow a, a freaking glass beer bottle. <laughs> uh, so you really got to pay attention to the prey. Look at the anatomy of the fish that you're going after. If it's got a big mouth, bigger hook, got a smaller mouth, smaller hook. If you know they're going to be bigger in that area, generally a bigger hook than what you would normally use for that fish is how you has at least how I determine the size of hook uh, that I'm using. But good question. Let's see here. What is the what bait was the hot bait on the 39 hour fishing trip? Um, I think the best bait that I use 95% of the time when I'm near shore offshore fishing is a thread fin plug on a double snell rig. It doesn't matter if I'm on a 10 hour trip, a 12 hour trip, 39, 44 hour trip, 80% of the trip I'm going to be fishing with one of those thread fin plugs and a double snell rig. Uh, and right on our website, you can go to hubbardsmarina.com and on our website under fishing trips, you can scroll down to fishing tips and tricks. And on the fishing tips and tricks page, we have that how to tie a double snell rig is that first video. And then down here is the uh, how to rig the double snell rig for a mangrove snapper. And this is the, the secret Brian, weapon. Talking to you today about how to rig a double snell rig. Now we've done videos on how to tie a double snell rig. Today we're going to show you how to rig a double snell rig. Rigging is very important to make sure that double snell bait gets down to bottom very quickly 
hydrodynamically and making sure it doesn't spin. Tying a double snell rig is easy to do, but once you rig it correctly to make sure it doesn't spin and doesn't cause tangles on the way down is another challenge we're going to cover today. So first step for rigging a double snell rig is taking a piece of fluorocarbon. I always use fluorocarbon for my mangrove snapper fishing. Right here we're going to tie a double snell rig for our 39 hour fishing trip. So I'm going to use some 50 pound fluorocarbon. I'm going to pull out about 5 feet of fluorocarbon here. And the reason for that guys is I want a little longer leader. A, because the double snell rig takes some line, and B, because typically that gives my hooks a little further from my lead. It gives me an opportunity to present that bait a little bit more naturally. Now, to, die, to tie a double snell rig, guys, you have to have both ends of the line available. You can't have one end tied to your swivel. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on how to tie this, because I've already shown you that in other videos, but we're going to show you real quickly now. So first step to tying the double snow rig is putting that monofilament right through the eyelet of that first hook and always start through the front of the hook and then you just pinch the line there. And now I'm gonna wrap that uh, floral carbon around the hook. A little easier if you have a little extra line. There we go. So once you get it started, you're gonna wrap it about seven to eight times and then pinch that leader. And now you started through the front, so you're gonna finish through the back on that first hook. Really, really simple, easy knot. Once you get that fluorocarbon bent, this fluorocarbon's a little bit stiffer than monofilament, so sometimes starting that double snell rig is a little bit of a challenge. The first hook, we start through the front and finish through the back. The second hook, we're gonna start through the back and finish through the back. So spacing on this is depending on the size of my bait. Now these are six aught hooks and 50 pound fluorocarbon for an overnight trip. So I'm gonna put these hooks a little bit further apart because I'm gonna be using a bigger chunk of thread fin. Now I'm gonna leave about a half inch between the apex of that second hook and the eyelet of that first hook. So now that I've got my spacing right, I'm just gonna do the same knot as I did on that first hook. There we go, got it started. And just about seven to eight turns on the shank of that hook, pinch it. And again, on that second hook, we started through the back and we're gonna finish through the back. And now we've got our double snell rig all complete. We're gonna tighten this down, make it a little seated better. And now we've got our double snell rig ready to hook on our bait. To hook your bait, you gotta prepare your bait. So preparing your bait for a double snell rig, we're going to do our mangrove snapper special. This is called a thread fin or a sardine plug depending on what bait you use. Right now we've got a nice thread fin here so we're going to plug them up. First step, trim that tail off. So trim the tail and then we're going to trim the head and then we're going to trim our belly cavity. So now we've got a nice juicy chunk of bait here with the belly cavity open, plenty of guts oozing out, and the tail cavity open as well. And we've got a nice chunk of bait that's gonna be going to bottom naturally, looking very natural on the bottom, we're gonna be emitting a lot of smell, and we're gonna hook it and rig it nice and straight so it goes to bottom quickly. So how to start this rig is we always put the head side or the thicker side of this bait on that last hook. You want this first hook or the bottom hook furthest from your lead towards the fatter end of the bait. The reason why is we want this skinnier end of the bait pointed at your lead. That way as the lead drags this to bottom, it's gonna go down to the bottom very hydrodynamically and it's not gonna spin on you. So the first step here to rigging this bait is you're gonna put the tip or barb of that hook perpendicular to that silver and blue line which denotes the spine or backbone of this bait. And I'm gonna go underneath that backbone and I'm gonna pull that hook out towards the other side. Once I've got it out on the other side of the bait, I'm simply just gonna spin that hook shank to where it's parallel with the silver and blue line. Now that I've got that hook shank parallel, I'm gonna go in with this second hook and same thing. Underneath the backbone, out the other side of the bait and turn it parallel. So now what you're left with is a super straight, clean piece of bait that's gonna go to the bottom very quickly because that skinnier side is pointed down towards the lead. 
So this is called a double snell bait. And you can see here, as it sits on the bottom, come a little closer. So as it sits on the bottom, it doesn't matter where that mangrove snapper bites this bait, he's gonna have one of these hooks in his mouth. So a double snell rig really enables you to catch more fish and be more efficient, especially when you're fishing for those quick biting mangrove snapper. This was how to rig a double snow rig. Again, Cap Dylan Hubbard from Hubbard's Marina. Yeah, yeah. Remember, if you're too you busy to go fishing, All right. you're just too uh, busy. Uh, stop the video. There we go. <laughs> All right, so there's a lot more of those great videos on our website, too. If you're interested in seeing more of them, definitely check out that Fish and Tips and Tricks page after the show ends. Let's see here. Uh, next question. Uh, it would be cool if you guys gave a fish recipe every show. Example this week could be amber jackfish tacos, next trip kingfish dip, red snapper on the grill, and so on. That's a great suggestion. Uh, I'm kind of a one-trick pony when it comes to my fish. Uh, I either get them cooked at the restaurant, the friendly fisherman next door to our boats. When we dock, we fillet up. Your, we offer a fish filleting service after our trips. And once you get your fish filleted, right there on on the dock is the restaurant. So the friendly fisherman will offer to uh, Cajun fry, regular fry, broil, or blacken your fish. And those are the four ways that I cook my fish the most uh, because it's just easy after a trip, let the friendly cook it, and uh, I'm ready to rock and roll. Uh, now, if I bring my fish home, I really only have one recipe. It's a recipe my grandfather used. It's a recipe my grandmother used. The recipe my dad used the, my whole life, uh, and that is right on uh, Fox 13 News. We did it live. We did a fishing fish cooking segment uh it's called uh good uh, i'll pull up the screen so you guys can see so just go to google on google type in good uh day gourmet uh dylan hubbard mangrove snapper that should be enough to catch it so good day gourmet grilled mangrove snapper that was our fox 13 segment where we talk about uh how to cook fish and this is my family's secret recipe for cutting fish cooking up fish and of course there's a commercial so once this commercial ends there it is i'll be able to show it at Hubbard's Marina at John's Pass and we're here because we're bringing in a special guest who's going to help us with our cooking today. We have Captain Dylan Hubbard. So we love your fishing reports yep. and we're really excited that you're going to help us whip up a fish. And this is a recipe you said that is a family recipe for you, right? Yes, this is our third generation family fishing recipe. Basically, whenever we have fish, whether we're going to grill them, broil them, we prepare them and cook them in the same fashion. So this is definitely one of the Hubbard family secrets that we're sharing today. And uh, it's really, really good. So I'm excited to share it. All right, we're looking forward to it. Let's get into it. Mangrove snapper. These are one of my favorite eating fish. These guys are super fresh. They're super good eating. It's like Thanksgiving morning yeah, when you exactly. cut into the turkey. And now you've got all the meat off that fish. So once we did one side, we're going to flip it around and do the back side, cut right along the backbone. Well, that seems pretty nice and easy. And then once you've got them filleted, then we got to skin them. Okay. So now you've got the skin That's removed. a clean cut right there. Yeah. <laughs> Still got some scales and stuff like that, but we we're going to rinse these down real good to get okay. rid of all the scales. Nice mist setting with the hose. Light spritz. And then as we prepare the fish, we're going to use some... Uh, some mayo and the mayo will clear out any uh, extra scales. Oh yes, the mayo. Oh, that's I the love secret. The mayo. Now we're ready to prep it. Obviously, we've talked about the mayo and it's got to be the real mayo. This stuff will cook off and you'll see that when we start grilling. I'm a, a big large... mayo fan by oh. the way. So you don't have to sell me on it. All right. <laughs> well, that's good cuz I am too. We've got it mayoed up, so we're going to season it up. Okay. Black pepper. I really like this Himalayan salt. So they, they cut it out, but real important, you use Hellman's mayo. Something about it, my grandmother, my father, they swear, and I've tried it. Anything else doesn't work. It's got to be Hellman's real mayo. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> 
Oh, I clicked the wrong button. <laughs> I like going a little heavier on the seasoning myself. A little bit of onion powder. Gotta have some garlic powder. Yes. This one's garlic, garlic salt. salt. Okay. This is my one of my favorites. This Look is at this. Everglades seasoning. So now we've got one side done. So we're gonna just simply grab these things and flip them over. So now we're just gonna move these over to the grill. So we've got our grill nice and hot. Okay. And we're ready to put this fish on here. And as soon as we put them on there, the timer's gonna start because we don't wanna leave them on there too long because okay. it makes it really difficult to flip them. So this one I can tell is already pretty much ready. The sides are starting to get opaque. So he's cooking. You can tell it's already starting to stick together. So ah. just real quick flip. I'm honestly very impressed with myself that I haven't let one break. Oh, oh there yeah. we go. Did you jinx yourself? I no, did. you didn't. You didn't. I think you got this. There. Oh, yes. recovered. Commit yes. to the flip. You still got a little bit of translucent uh, fish right on the top there. I'm going to go ahead and close this up okay. and let it get that top side nice and seared up too. I think we're gonna take this guy off right here without breaking it up. So this is it. Ladies first. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. And it's oh, easy as that. The, definitely oh, the man. best recipe Tasty. that I know is just simply a little bit of mayo, light coating of mayo, and then it helps the seasoning stick. That's the reason for the mayo is the seasoning sticks and also the mayo, the fat in the mayo cooks off, but it makes the edges of that fish really crispy and it holds in that moisture. So it makes it really moist on the inside, nice and crispy on the outside, and it keeps that seasoning on the fish. You can use that recipe to broil or to grill your fish. And if you use blackened seasoning, now you've blackened the fish. So that's kind of my one trick pony right there as far as fish recipes go. So uh, it's right there on the internet. Just Google good day, gore, good day Gourmet Grilled Mangrove Snapper and you can find that video if you want to watch it again. Uh, let's see, next question. Uh, how, uh, trying to pull off another trip this year, uh, are you currently equipped to accommodate groups in July. Yes, I mean, we're fishing every day. We got tons of fishing trips. Our specialty trips like the 39, 44 hour and 12 hour extreme trips are pretty well sold out for June. There's a little bit of room left on some of those trips in later July, like 39 hour trips Tuesday and Sunday. Uh, the last three weeks in July have room on them. The 12 hour extremes are pretty full all the way through red snapper season until you get into uh, later July. And then our five hour trips, 10 hour trips have tons of room on them all the way through July. And there's always private charter options too. So there's still plenty of trips to book for sure. Uh, regardless of this uh, COVID-19 uh, capacity limitation issue that we're facing. Uh, what's the best bait to use for grouper when going out on the 10-hour trip? Uh, my favorite is a long strip of squid. Uh, you can use a live pinfish or a whole thread fin with the tail cut. Also, we have frozen baby octopus in the shop that work pretty well, too. Uh, but the long strip of squid would probably be my best chance. L long strip of squid or a live pinfish, I would say, would be the go-to baits for uh, a nice chance at a keeper red grouper on a 10-hour trip or a 39-hour trip. So right now, we're sitting at about... Uh, 450-ish live viewers. Appreciate everybody tuning in tonight. We are just about out of time tonight, so I'm going to get to the rest of these texts. A lot of people send in uh, questions via text, and I'll get to these uh, texts later after the show is over. I'll try to get to some of your questions in the comments, too, uh, before we give away our last free trip of the night, which is that 39-hour trip. We do have some announcements. One of the biggest announcements is this Friday, the 39-hour trip, May 29th, only has 17 people on it. Super light load. It's going to be the last one. Uh, for two or three months because once red snapper season starts we're going to be running full so definitely check out this friday may 29th great opportunity to get out there and catch plenty of fish and have tons of room on the boat oh huge announcement here we updated our website 
check this out on our website you can go to store and then go to marina store we just updated our online store and our new online store has our new hook extractors on it it's got our fishing reels on it it's got our fishing rods on it it's got tons of hubbard's marina t-shirts and it's also got our saltwater hippie stuff on it too and we're going to be adding our salinity gear shirts to that this week as well so tons of uh cool stuff on the store and everything has options so like for example on the hats you can choose all the different hat colors and it'll show you the different colors right on the page so you can select all the different options uh, to purchase uh, from our online store and same thing with the saltwater hippie products there's other color options that you can choose from so there's a lot of cool new stuff on that online store again just go to hubbardsmarina.com click store marina store and that's where you see all that cool new stuff right on our website so definitely check that out when you have a second after the show also don't forget uh eh, that was all our announcements <laughs> not many tonight so uh tomorrow we'll be making that announcement as far as capacities go uh probably around midday tomorrow so stay tuned to our facebook and youtube channel and instagram for that update on the announcements tomorrow and the reason we waited i saw someone already comment tonight about why are you waiting so long to make the announcement well we were hoping that we would be further down the road and we'd have some more information but unfortunately we haven't gotten any more information and at this point we can't afford to wait any longer because people are scheduled on trips they have plans so we set this out three weeks ago and let everybody know this was the day we were going to make that decision and the reason we did that is to give people time hey if they didn't want to wait they could change their plans now or if they wanted to wait and see what happens with the federal and state government and county government they could wait with us so hopefully everybody has been paying attention to our videos and our updates in our weekly email newsletter that's had this information in it for a while now so uh looking forward to this red snapper season and uh hopefully everybody's willing to work with us here and uh, get through this together um, but long story short we are wrapping things up tonight so the last thing we got to get to is we got to give away a 39 hour fishing trip for one lucky winner so let's see who that lucky winner is of our 39 hour fishing trip for one guest coming at you now and the winner is Andrew Bates from Dunedin. Congratulations, Andrew Bates. Remember to text that number in the upper right-hand corner shortly to claim your free trip. Everybody else out there, hopefully we'll see you again next week. This show is every Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. So we'll see you next week, same time, same place, 8.30 p.m. And every Sunday night after that. So tune into our shows, check out our pages, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Snapchat. Just simply search Hubbard's Marina. And don't forget, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. Have a good night, y'all.